Recently, our client Tommy met his banker to discuss continuing his father's restaurant legacy. In us, he found a partner that understood the importance of passing the torch. First Horizon Bank. Let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Tommy. Amos, it's Sunday again. Uh, Sunday is right, and don't forget we is on the radio every Sunday for Rinso. Yeah, and here comes Ken Carpenter now with the biggest news in Rinso's history. Let's listen to it's him. It's the biggest news ever. It's new 1950 Rinso with Solium, a full year ahead of time. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. But more about that in a few minutes. Now, Lever Brothers Company and new 1950 Rinso bring you the Amos and Andy Show. Yes, sir. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Rinso, brings you a full half hour of entertainment with Lou Lubin, Ernestine Wade, the Jubilaires, Jeff Alexander's Orchestra and Chorus, and radio's all time favorites, Amos and Andy. <laughs> Well, there seems to be some spring cleaning going on today in the household of George Kingfish Stevens. The Kingfish and his wife, Sapphire, are now in the back bedroom washing windows. Sapphire is sitting on the windowsill with her feet in the room, washing the outside of the glass. Look, you big loafer, if you won't do no work, the least you could do is hold my ankles inside there while I'm sitting on this windowsill cleaning the outside of the window. Well, I'll hold them. Don't worry about the thing. <laughs> you know, if I was to fall off of this window ledge, it'd drop to the ground would kill me. George, why are you looking at me like that? Oh, nothing. I'd never get away with it anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, tell me, South, why, uh, uh, why are we spending so much time cleaning this back room? Don't tell me your mama's coming to stay with us again. And what would be so terrible about that? Listen, South, why, there's only three major disasters that ever hit this present generation. The blizzard of 88, the San Francisco earthquake, and your mama. <laughs> and I think I got them in the wrong order, too. <laughs> That, George, and it so happens all this cleaning up ain't for Mama. Mm. We've had so little money coming in the past few months, I didn't reach the decision. We're taking in a boat. A border? Nothing doing, Sapphire Stevens. I just couldn't bear the disgrace having the neighbors to know that my wife had to rent a room, that my sweet little spouse had to sink so low as to take in a border. Well, George, that's sweet of you to be so considerate, but what else can I do? Well, maybe you could get your old job back washing cars. <laughs> Like that. Well, George, it so happens I done already rented the room out to a boat. Well, I ain't gonna have no boat in this house. I'll throw him and his bags out in the street. But he's a nice man. I'll toss him right out on his ear. But, George, he's paying us $18 a week. When can I welcome this charming fellow to the. <laughs> yes, Andy, me and Sapphire done took in a border. A border? Kingfish, I am surprised that you're doing a thing like that. Why, Andy? Well, after all, Kingfish, I done read somewhere that a man's home is supposed to be his castle, a place where he can get away from the cares of the world and seek sanctuary. <laughs> yeah, I know, Andy, but this fellow's paying us $18 a week. Oh, $18. Well, I guess you can tear down the castle for that. <laughs> yeah, tear down the sanctuary and everything else for that. <laughs> Tell me this, uh, what kind of fellow is he, King? Well, I ain't met him yet, Andy. Uh, he came in last night after I went to sleep, and he left this morning before I woke up. Hmm. That man gonna kill himself. He only getting eight hours sleep. Yeah, he <laughs> I done snooped around his room door and trying to get a line on him. He sure brought a lot of baggage with him. Yeah, now, how is his clothes? Uh, too tight for me under the arm. I tried to... <laughs> I think the sapphire would have been a reciterate enough to take in a size 44 board at least. Yeah. Well, anyway, at least you can use his neckties and handkerchiefs. Yeah, well, the main thing I was worried about is how was we going to feed the man? Yeah. I done told sapphire the thing to do is to start the meals off with a lot of water and sweet rolls. Mm -hmm. That'll bloat him up and he'll be slowed down by the time the expensive stuff comes, like <laughs> the hash and the meatloaf and that stuff. You know. yeah. Well, either that or you could sit him right across the table from sapphire. Yeah, that ought to take his appetite, yeah. <laughs> Suppose the main thing is uh, what kind of meals are going to serve the man. And you live at a boarding house. Uh, what kind of stuff you get over there? Oh, not so good, Kingfish. Tell you the truth, when the food comes to the table, it looks so bad you can't eat it. Mm, look bad, huh? Yeah. yeah, what do you do, Andy? Well, lately I done found a way to solve the problem. I just use my napkin as a blindfold and plow right in. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope this boarding thing works out all right. It's my hope. I'm going to get on home now and meet him at supper. Yeah, you know, there's just one thing, Kingfish. 
I don't like to mention this, but you know, with a border around the place, there's always the chance that he might run off with your wife. Yeah, I thought of that too, Andy, but with my luck, it would never happen. I... <laughs> Yes, I assume, Zephyr. George, look in the parlor. There's flowers, and I got the lights out and candles lit in there. It's all ready for the boat. Holy smokes, don't tell me your food has killed him already. <laughs> don't be funny, George. Yeah. Read the supper in there. Oh. I want Mr. Wilson's first meal here to be a pleasant one. Yeah, yeah. Everything's on the table. Now, you go wash your hands, and I'll call him. Wash my hands for what? For the boarder's benefit. What are you talking about? I ain't gonna touch the fellow. <laughs> George, be quiet. I'm gonna call Mr. Wilson now. Oh, Mr. Wilson! Dinner's ready if you are. Now, remember, George, be nice to him. Remember, he's paying us $18 a week. Well, don't worry about me. I can get along with anybody for $18 a week. Well, well, you must be Stephen. Put it there, old boy. <laughs> Winthrop Wilson's the name, but my friends call me Wendy. <laughs> Wendy Wilson. So <laughs> far, we got to get more money. Don't. <laughs> Well, let's sit down. Looks like you got a wonderful meal on the table here, Miss Stevens. Oh, I'm crazy about roast beef. I'll just help myself here. <laughs> Certainly nice being with you people. Oh, uh, by the way, Stevens, what line of work you in? Well, uh, kind of semi-retired. I round the house a lot. Uh, uh round the house a lot, huh? <laughs> uh, 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 Miss Stevens, uh, I wonder if I could have a lock on my bedroom door. Uh... <laughs> Well, I don't think that'll be necessary. Oh, this roast beef certainly is good, all right. You know, I'm very glad I found this place. Very comfortable here. You know, a lot of single men like hotels. Not me. I'm a friendly type. Like to have people around me all the time. I'll help myself another piece of beef here. Say, uh, uh, Stephen, you seem rather quiet. What's wrong? Well, I... Speak up if you have something to say. Join in the conversation. A man never got anywhere in life keeping his mouth shut. Well, I... That's right, speak up. <laughs> you know, there's an art conversation. You've got to learn to express yourself. That's what you got a mouth and a mind for. Use them. Well, I agree with you. You see, I always feel that if a man... And now, now, let's not overdo it. (laughs) Now, I hate a blabbermouth. (laughs) You you know, you've got to listen sometimes, too. I'm the listening type myself. I'm sort of on the quiet side. (laughs) I can't help it. That's the way I am. Well, I'll have some more potatoes and some more beans. And say, I see there's one piece of roast beef left. I'll help myself to that. Uh, Hold it, hold it. You're over on my plate now. Get off of my plate. George, wasn't that a lovely dinner? Lovely dinner? I didn't think he'd ever stop talking. Had the dinner when he went in his room and it got quiet, it was like a sawmill shutting down. <laughs> I wonder what he's doing in the room now. Well, he was telling me that every night he goes in his room and spends a couple of hours working on his hobby. Hobby, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, that's well. Most likely one of them stamp collectors. You know, they call him a uh, philanthropist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad he's out of here and I don't have to listen to him no more. I'm so peaceful just sitting here and relaxing. Yes, I love this time of the day, George. Yeah, nice and quiet. Oh, that smoke. What in the world is that? George, that's his hobby. He plays the saxophone. Oh, no. to be blowing into the right end of that thing. <laughs> Why, George, I think he plays it very well. And Red Sails in the Sunset is my favorite song. Well, that'll help. At least he knows another tune. <laughs> Marching home. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah, we give him a hearty welcome then, hurrah, hurrah, the men with the 
will cheer, the boys will shout, the ladies, they will all turn out, and we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. The steeple bell will peal with joy. Welcome home, my soldier boy. Hurrah, hurrah. The village lads and lads and say that they will cheer him along the way. And we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. His old friends will meet him with joy. The butcher, the baker, and the paper boy. The barber, the tailor, the cop on the beat. The dog is on the corner. And the girl across the street. Her name is Mary, Mary. There is no thing there that's sweet and fair. It's a grand old day. Get ready for the jubilee. Hurrah! Hurrah! To get out, he will be time free. Hip, 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 hooray! There's a good time coming. Let's jump for joy. Start celebrating for Johnny Boy. We all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. Johnny comes marching home. When Johnny comes marching home again. Hurrah! 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 New 1950 Rinso is here, a year ahead, the greatest development in soap history. 1950 Rinso with Solium puts sunshine in your wash. New Rinso with wonderful Solium gets white clothes whiter than new and washable colors brighter than new. That's right. 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new and colors actually brighter than new. My Rinso wash is almost unbelievably bright. It's because Rinso, only new Rinso, contains the scientific sunlight ingredient, Solium. 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. That's right. No other soap gets and keeps your clothes as white as bright. And yet Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to your hands. Get the new 1950 Rinso in the same green and yellow package and see how 1950 Rinso with Solium Put sunshine in your wash. Now, back to Amos and Andy. So, you've been having a little trouble with that boat of yours, eh, Kingfish? Oh, uh, yes, Amos. Uh, He's been there a week now, and I'm about to go out of my mind. Oh, yeah, that saxophone is really getting to Kingfish, Amos. Oh, I tell you, boy, that plan of his is ruining my health. I already got migratory headaches. Oh. <laughs> uh, tell me this, is uh, the saxophone really that bad, Kingsley? Bad? Even the cats on the back fence is leaving. <laughs> you know, I even went to my doctor, Amos. Yeah, well, what did the doctor prescribe, Amos? Well, he agreed that if listening to that saxophone playing was giving me the headache and ruining my health, that I, I'll do something about it. Huh. So he gave me some pills for sedatives. Uh, call them uh, Fina Barber Pole or something like that. <laughs> well, uh, how'd they work? How'd they work? No good. The border wouldn't take them. <laughs> I tell you, boys, I threw that bum out, but Sapphire won't let me. She thinks he's charming, you know, because they come to the table with a clean T-shirt on for supper and all that. <laughs> <laughs> and well, Kingfish, even though uh, Sapphire wants him there, it seems to me like that, well, the husband ought to be the boss of the house. And you ought to figure out some way of getting that man out of there. I don't want to get messed up in it, but I certainly feel that way. Well, I got to run along, fella. So long. Yeah, so long, Amos. So long. Hey, you know, Anna, what Emma said about uh, being the boss, give me an idea there. What's that, Kingfish? Well, Sapphire only took the board in to get money. Yeah. Now, if I was to get a job and bring in some money, I would be the boss of the house again. I could throw the fellow out no matter what she say. Holy smoke, you're going to take a job? <laughs> you must hate that saxophone even worse than I thought you did. <laughs> I'll say I hate it, but I got an angle on it. Look here, I'll go down to the government unemployment office and have them give me a job for a couple of months as an executive. Then I'll quit the thing. And then I'll be eligible for the unemployment insurance again. <laughs> hey, Kingfish, I'll go with you. This is a rare thing. Seeing you asking for work is like seeing a total eclipse. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, say, Andy, the unemployment man say to sit right here at this desk, and he'd be right back to interview me for the job. Yeah, well, you know, he might give you a Zachary's job at that if you play the thing right. Yeah, well, I, I say, wait a minute. Uh, here comes the fellow now. All right. All right, Mr. Stevens. As I understand it, you wish employment. Oh, uh, yeah, so that's right. I'd like to have some dignified position uh, in keeping with my stationery in life. That's what I'd like to have. 
Now, Mr. Stevens, how recently have you worked? Uh, what was your last job? Well, now, let me think. Uh, it was only a short time ago. My last job. Hmm. Don't quite recall what that job was. No, I remember, Kingfish. It was driving a horse car. Uh, <laughs> you have to excuse Mr. Brown. Yeah, he was thinking about my grandpa. That's what he was thinking about. <laughs> well, what was your last job? Well, uh, just for example, two years ago, I got $350 from the Eureka Mammoth Furniture Company. Uh, furniture Company? Uh, that was your salary, eh? Uh, yes, I think it was. No, it wasn't, Kingfish. Don't you remember? You were sleeping in the alley behind their factory, and one of the trucks backed over your foot. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, I had a big job at the time, Mister, and uh, all of us vice presidents took a nap out there in the alley. Uh, now, getting back to this job, though, uh, if you got something for me, uh, well, like something like in a bank or maybe the Federal Reserve, you know, something counting money, I'm good at that kind of stuff. Uh, I didn't think it would suit my talents, you see. Well, I've just been looking over the list of jobs here, Mr. Stevens, and I see one I think would fit your talents to a T. Mm, fine. Uh, what is it? It's over in New Jersey picking berries. Uh, picking birds. Well, now, just a minute, mister. Uh, I got kind of a bad back, and I'm going to tell you about my back, too. You know, I bend over like that. Every time I bend over, my sacred alias jack pops out. That's it. <laughs> Take that right in. Oh, Joe, Joe. Sometimes a thing pops there 20, 30 feet. <laughs> Took us two days to find it once. <laughs> well, if that job doesn't shoot you, here's one running a freight elevator on a night shift. Uh, afraid out of it on next ship. Uh, well, now, about that job, uh, I can't stand being closed in a small place like elevator. See, I got what they call, uh, claustrophobia. That's what I got. <laughs> well, I tell you, mister, uh, you better forget about that one. Uh, uh just a minute here. Uh, there's another job here you might handle, a cleaning job, standing on a ladder and washing walls. Well, I couldn't take that ladder job neither, mister. Well, what's wrong with that? Don't tell me that would give you claustrophobia. Uh, no, but when I work up high like that, I get the hydrophobia. That's what I'm Go along, mister. Well, Kingfish, listen, uh, what you gonna do now? Well, I don't know, Andy. Uh, just gonna have to live with that saxophone player until I can find some other way of it. Yeah. So, George, you finally got home. Where have you been? Well, I had a bite of supper with Andy. I, I just couldn't stand coming home and listening to Wendy this evening. Say, I don't hear no saxophone playing. Where is it? Well, I don't think you'll hear it tonight, George. He brought a friend home from the office and they're in his room. I reckon they must be talking busy. Yeah, well, first good break I've had since we've been here. Well, I'd just like to sit down here and close my eyes and... <laughs> Smokes to do it. Oh, no. Oh, me with them two saxophones blatant last night. I got a double headache this morning. Come in, doors open. Who is it? It's, it's the most, uh, most important member of the committee. It's the most intelligent. It's the smartest man. I, 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 nobody much. Uh, sit down, Crowley. I ain't got time, King Chris. It's almost five o'clock, and I want to get back to my barber shop and get myself a shave. Yeah, well, how come you got to get back there before five? I, I, I got to get back there before I close. <laughs> well, listen, Crowley, uh, look, here, I really got myself a problem today. Mm. I got a saxophone playing border up in my place. And I gotta find some way to get rid of him. Oh, he's driving me crazy. Well, tell you, tell you, there ain't, ain't but one way to get that boat out. Take off your coat, roll up your sleeves, walk right up to him and say, you uh... Oh, by the way, King Fish, how tall is you? Uh, I'm five foot ten. Uh, how, how, how tall is the boat? Uh, six foot four. Why don't you sue him? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Be, be good if you could just throw him out. That's what you should do. Yeah, well, I can. Besides that, my wife won't limit. She says he's a nice fellow, and on top of that, we need the board money. Mm. So I gotta find some way to make him leave of his own violation. That's what I gotta find. <laughs> yeah, well, what, 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 do, what do he do for a living? Tell me that. Uh, what does he do? Well, he works for some big business organization. I was thinking if there was some way I could get him fired from his job so that he couldn't afford to pay the board, he'd have to go back to Georgia where he come from. Yeah, well, you, you know the thing that all these big firms is worried about now with their employees is on American stuff. Now, if, if you if you if you was to go up to this fellow's boss and and tell him that you was a member of an investigating committee, 
and you found out some bad things about him, you 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 might get him fired that way. You see? Yeah, say that ain't a bad idea. <laughs> And that's exactly what I'm going to do, too, Shorty. And I'll find Andy, and I'll get him to help me. Mm. You know, I, 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 I kind of feel sorry for Bolton, because cause they, they have their troubles, too. I, I know, because I, I, I used to live in a Bolton house myself. Oh, you did, Shorty? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah it, it was a beautiful room, all, all paneled with all the animal rugs and everything. I remember one night I was having some friends over, and so I decided to make it nice and homey, and... Have a loud fire going for them. Yeah, that's always nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I got some beautiful hickory logs. And I, I got the right kind of kindling wood. And by the time they got there, I had a real roaring fire going. But, boy, it was my landlord's sword. Uh, how come, Shorty? Well, you see, he, he uh, you, uh, 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 no fireplace. <laughs> Let's go in, Andy. The secretary said that this is Mr. Parker's office. He's the boy. Yeah, well, I was all set. Uh, oh, uh, come in. My secretary said you wanted to see me on something important. Yeah, that's right, sir. Uh, very important. Uh, we as members of the Un-American Investigating Committee permit me to introduce ourselves. I is Un-American Stevens. This is Un-American Brown. <laughs> How you do, sir? How you do, sir? Uh, pardon my earphones. I've been tapping wires all morning. <laughs> Yes. Uh, well, what could you possibly want to see me about? Well, Mr. Parker, you have an uh, employee and you employ by the name of Wilson. That's right. He's a salesman for us. Well, I thought I'd inform you that we have discovered that this man, Wilson, is a spy. What? Wilson, a spy? That's right. He's a regular Motsy Harry. That's what he is. <laughs> oh, yeah. There ain't no question about it, mister. He's uh, versatile, all right. Yes, I got suspicious of him when uh, he was... I thought he was working for a foreign government the first time I met him. Well, why? What happened? Well, he pulled out his wallet and asked me if I had changed for a ruble. <laughs> well, tell me this. If there's any truth to what you say, just what country do you suspect him of working for? Well, as near as we can figure, he's working on a freelance basis. Oh, yeah, he's lancing for everybody. Yeah, that's what he is. <laughs> we didn't look in a suitcase and found 47 different flags. Now, in case this country is ever invaded, no matter who comes, he's on their side waving the flag. <laughs> well, up to now, this has all been sheer supposition on your part that he's a spy. Have you any definite proof of this? Oh, certainly we have. We give him a test on the lie detector machine. Yeah. You know, the one of them things with all the needles and the bulbs and the dials go all over? Well, anyway, we set the dials and we strap the thing on the man's arm and we ask him point blank. Is you in the employ of any foreign government? What happened? The machine blew up. <laughs> and we had to finally throw water on it, too. Yeah. Now, look, this has gone just about far enough. I don't know who you are or what your purpose is. We've always found Wilson to be a trusted employee. Yeah, Mr. Parker, you've got to fire this man. Now, look, for your information, not only are we not going to fire him, but it might interest you to know that we're transferring him today to our Albuquerque branch, where he'll occupy a much more important position than he does now. Oh, being transferred to Albuquerque, huh? Yeah, well, that's all right with us, just as long as he's out of the United States. We don't care. <laughs> Well, I'll get on in the house here. I guess Mr. Wilson just about ready to leave. Finally going to get rid of that saxophone playing. Drive me crazy. This really going to be a relief. Oh, Miss Wilson. <laughs> Hello, Stephen. I thought I heard you come in. Well, I'm going to have to leave you. The boss told me today I've been transferred to the Albuquerque branch. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, just when we was learning to love you, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got to leave right away. Got my grits all packed. Oh, I certainly have enjoyed staying here. Yeah, well, I uh, guess this is goodbye, then. Yes, it is. Well, I'm off. Oh, say goodbye to the little woman for me. Wonderful woman. Wonderful woman. No, no. Goodbye, Miss Wilson. Goodbye. Well, I'm glad he's gone. And for the first time, I'll have a little peace and quiet. Oh, Joyce. Oh, Sapphire, I didn't know you was in the house. Where is you? In the kitchen, Joyce. Did Mr. Wilson go yet? Oh, uh, yeah, he just left. He was such a nice man. I'm sure going to miss him. But at least he left me something to remember him by. Here it is, and he taught me how to play it, too. Oh, no, no, Sapphire. Wait a minute. Hold it. Well, come in, fellas. Glad to see you. Yeah, hi, Amos. Hi. Well, hello there, Amos. We just dropped over to see your little baby, little Amos Andrews. Yeah, that's right. 
Uh, where is he right here in the crib? Say hello to your godfathers, honey. <laughs> yeah, he was very well. Uh, I went to quite a lot of expense to bring a present here for little darling. See here, Emil Sandra? Uh, how you like that? Yeah, well, that's very nice of you, baby. But don't you think something like that is a little advanced for a three-month-old baby? Oh, no. She'll learn how to handle it in no time. Uh, listen. Ladies and gentlemen, many people have written in asking where they can get the lovable Amos Sandra doll. Well, we're happy to tell you that the Amos Sandra doll is now available at your favorite department or chain store. Amos Sandra is really a beautiful doll. You know, Amos, to hear Mr. Carpenter talk like that almost makes me want to be a mother. <laughs> and speaking of mothers, Amos, how many women is there in the world? Oh, there are millions, Andy. Why? Well, then it's safe to say that Rinso passed the biggest test in the world. Yeah, sure has, because more women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. Is that right, Mr. Cardinal? All right, is Rinso. More women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. New 1950 Rinso contains solium, the scientific sunlight ingredient. It has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. 1950 Rinso will get white clothes whiter than brand new. Washable colors even brighter than brand new. Only 1950 Rinso contains solium. Good night, folks. See you next Sunday. <laughs> Be sure and be with us next Sunday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company, the makers of New Rinso with Solium, will again present the Amos and Andy Show. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Yes, doctors proved it. You are cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy. Get Life Boy Health Soap right away. Be sure and listen to the Amos and Andy Show at this same time next Sunday. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week for Columbia Broadcasting System.